Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here and welcome to another episode of Challenge Jimmy. This is where you, the subscriber, can send me your JPEGs or RAW files and I'll process them in Photoshop and hopefully you can learn some cool techniques while doing so. Now thank you very much to Lin Dong for sending in this particular image. In this tutorial we're going to go from this base exposure and we've got a two more exposures to work with as well and we're going to go to this final image here that you see. So we're going to blend three exposures, it's going to be very clean, very quick and we're going to use a 100% non-destructive workflow in Photoshop. Now as usual I'm going to show you how you can do this with my software Raya Pro but I'm also going to show you how to do it without Raya Pro in case you don't own the panel yet. So let's get on with the tutorial. So here are the three exposures we're going to be working with and as you can see they're very beautifully shot, extremely sharp and we have some gorgeous sky and reflection to work with. This we're going to use as the base exposure and this is a darker exposure but we're going to call this a middle exposure and this is the darker exposure. So in the base exposure we're going to use this as mainly just information for the foreground and you can see that the foreground's a little bit dark so in Adobe Camera Raw I'm going to bring up the shadows a little bit. Now our middle exposure, I'm going to leave that as it is. This is just going to bridge the gap between our darker exposure and our brighter exposure and you'll see what I mean by that later on. Now this is our darker exposure and because most of the sky is going to come from this exposure, I'm going to bring down the highlights just a little bit just to get a little bit more detail in these brighter areas here. So I've raised the shadows in the base exposure, I've darkened the highlights slightly in the darker exposure and I haven't touched the middle exposure and now I'm going to select all three, I'm going to go to the Lens Correction tab and choose Remove Chromatic Aberration and Enable Profile Corrections. Now when I've done that, instead of opening the images in Photoshop, I'm going to hold down Shift and you'll see it changes to Open Objects. And I've shown you this before in previous Challenge Jimmy videos. So by doing this, we're going to open up all of our exposures as Smart Objects in Photoshop. So I'll click on that. And now we have our three exposures opened up in different windows in Photoshop. Now to stack these exposures we can click on the move tool and we can just select the image and drag it over onto the other exposure. And if we hold down shift and let go of our left mouse button we'll place the image centrally. But if you're a Raya Pro user we can just open up Raya Pro and choose the stack function. And this will stack all open windows as layers in Photoshop. So let me make this a little bit bigger. Now there are lots of different ways to blend exposures in Photoshop and of course the more videos you watch, the more tutorials you watch and the more you experiment with your own techniques, the more you'll come up with your own process. And it also depends on the scene that we're working with. Some scenes we'll use luminosity masks, some we can use apply image, some we can use rapid blend if. It's entirely up to you. Now in this particular image I'm going to be using precision masks in Raya Pro 2.0. Now they are very similar to Apply Image, so you will be able to do this using Apply Image as well. And I'm going to show you how to do that without Raya Pro after I use Raya Pro to demonstrate the blending process. So how do we blend these exposures? Well, our base exposure is on the bottom here. We're going to put our darkest exposure on the top. There is our slightly darker exposure and there's our dark exposure. Now I'm just going to select our middle exposure, open up Raya Pro and choose Auto Blend Dark. And now we've created a mask on our middle exposure and with precision masks we can choose different strengths of blending. But in this example I'm just going to choose one and we can look at the mask by pressing Option or Alt on a PC and we can see that we've selected most of the sky but some of the foreground's quite light grey and also this part of the sky here is grey. But really we want to make the foreground a little bit darker and the sky a little bit brighter so that we can get more of the sky from this darker exposure and less of the foreground from the darker exposure too. Now with precision masks we can just choose manually edit and we can edit the mask to suit our needs. So just as I mentioned I'm going to darken the foreground, bring up the shadows here and I'm going to increase the highlights just to make the sky much brighter and if I'm happy with that I can press OK. And so now here's the before and here's after. And it's very subtle but if you look for example at the foreground here there's before and after and you can see we've brought back some of the brightness in the foreground. And if we go to the sky here we can see 
the before and after. If we do the before and after again, we can see we've brought back much of the sky now. So if we're happy, we can just press select. Now, if you're not a Raya Pro user, I can just delete this and instead you can create a mask by pressing this little button down here, make the middle exposure invisible, go to image, apply image, make sure your settings are the same as mine and press OK. Now we can make the middle exposure visible again. And just as before, I'm going to press Alt or Option on a Mac and make the mask visible. And to manually edit this mask, just like we did previously, we can hold down Control and L on a PC or Command and L on a Mac. And we bring up our Levels dialog again, and we can bring up the shadows. And you see we're darkening the shadows quite a lot. Now we don't want to make the shadows black. We want to make the blend a little bit smoother than that. So I'm just bringing along the highlights. Let's bring down the mid-tones a little bit just to darken the foreground a bit more. And if we're happy with that, we can press OK. And now if we select the middle layer, we can see the before and after. And we've done a pretty decent job of blending those exposures. Now to blend the darker exposure, I'm going to go to Auto Blend Dark in Raya Pro again. And again, I'm going to go for a very general mask. We could go for a more specific mask like a Mask 3 or a 6 which only targets these particular areas around the sun. But as you can see, that's not a very good blend. Instead, if we go for a general blend and just press select, all we need to do now to make it a more natural blend is bring down the opacity of the darker exposure. And so this is the image we began with, and this is the final blended image. Very quick and very easy. And if we just zoom in, let's say 170, 180%, we can see we have no edging along the trees or the mountainside. Now, if you don't have Raya Pro, all you need to do here is apply image since we didn't do anything else. So I'm just gonna make the dark exposure invisible, choose the mask, go to image, apply image, and just as before, and press okay. And there we go, we can bring the opacity down to about 60% just as before, and we have a nice smooth blend. So why do we have to lower the opacity of the darker exposure? Well, that's because the darker exposure is simply too dark. Placing such a dark sky on top of a bright foreground just doesn't work very well. It isn't a very natural blend. And it kills much of the contrast in the foreground. But if we lower our opacity to 60%, we now create a more realistic blend with a more natural dynamic range of light, where the sky area is brighter than the foreground, which is exactly what we should have. So with the blending done, let's talk about adding mood to our image. Well, the first way to add mood to this particular image, because it's shot just before golden hour or around golden hour, is just to add some nice warm colors into the sky. Now, since the sky is coming from these two exposures, our two darker exposures, we can add color just to those exposures and without affecting the foreground. So it'll look more natural. To do that in a non-destructive way, we can double click on the thumbnail of these layers and that will bring up Adobe Camera Raw. Then we can increase the warmth of these layers and why not add just a few more pinks. And when we've done that, we can press OK and you can see we added some slight warmth there and now we can do it with the darker exposure. And remember, since the darker exposure is only visible at 60% opacity, we can bring this up quite a lot and the effect won't be too strong. So let's say about there and press OK. Now that's a huge difference, adding some beautiful pinks and warmth into the sky. Now what about adding some local contrast? So to bring out more detail in the sky and in the foreground. Well, doing just exactly what we did before, we can open up Adobe Camera Raw and we can bring the clarity slider along and that will add details into our image. Now we don't want to slide it along too much because that'll create halos around the objects in our image. So once we're happy, we just press OK. And you see we added some lovely local contrast to the sky. And I'm going to do the same on the middle exposure, about 20. And I'm going to do the same, and this will affect the foreground on the brightest exposure. So we can bring that along, let's say a little bit more, and press OK. And you can see we've given our image just a little bit more kick there. Now we can deepen the mood in the scene by changing the contrast. So I'm gonna open up a levels layer and I'm gonna bring the levels slider along and really add some brightness to the scene. And then I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna choose a black brush 
at 100% and I'm going to mask out this particular area because I don't want it to be too overexposed. Next, I'm going to darken the image. This step alone will add much more mood to your landscapes. And we can do that by opening up a curves layer and bringing down the mid-tones in the scene. But we don't want to create too many harsh shadows. So I just grab the black point here and I raise it ever so slightly. And that is creating a dark, soft, dreamy landscape. So about there is perfect. Now again, I think we need to add just a bit more brightness to our scene, and that's ideal. The next thing I'm gonna do is darken the highlights a little bit more and add a bit more color to it. And that's using a process in Raya Pro in the Enhance tab under Enhancements called Darken Sky. Now guys, if you haven't got Raya Pro, you can see a link to a video on how to do this called Fake HDR in the description of this video. So check that out and you might learn some pretty cool techniques. And as you can see, we darkened the highlights, but we also added a lot of color to the sky. Now I think that's very strong. So I'm just gonna bring down the opacity of that layer to around 35%. And that's the before and after. And you can see we're not adding any warmth or darkening any other part of the image apart from the highlights. Now we're going to change the entire dynamics of the scene and we're going to do that through a simple vignette. Much of the outside of this image is really just a frame pushing us towards these interesting clouds and the reflection in the water. So to give our image more depth we can create a vignette which pushes our viewers eyes closer towards those interesting clouds and we can do that by opening up a curves layer and bringing the curves layer down significantly and just as before I'm going to bring up the shadows a little bit. Then I'm going to press Command and I or Control and I on a PC to invert that mask. I'm going to choose a paintbrush, a white brush, and a nice and big size brush. And I'm just going to paint in that vignette. Now it is extremely dark, so I'm going to bring down the opacity of that just a little bit. And I'm going to create another curves layer and I'm going to bring up the mid-tones, brightening up the scene significantly. And again, I'm going to invert the mask just as before. And with my white paintbrush, I'm going to paint in that contrast adjustment. And we're brightening up our foreground and the area in the sky here. So that is the before and after. Now I'm just going to make a smaller brush and just paint in more of this area here. So let's see how big a difference that vignette made. I'm just going to select these two layers and group them and show you before and after. So there before the image was a lot flatter and when we first look at the scene we might be dragged towards these clouds but we're also distracted by the outsides of the image. After the vignette, which is quite strong, we now change the dynamics of the scene and we're pushing the viewer towards the brighter part of the image. And that in turn gives our scene more depth. Now if we want to brighten up our sky even more just to make it more impacting we can create a levels layer we can bring it all the way along like that we can press command and i or control and i and invert the mask make a nice big brush and let's make the opacity of this brush around 50 percent and we can just paint in these areas here like that so all we've done here is create some contrast adjustments, but let's see how big a difference that has made to our scene. So this is before any contrast adjustments, and this is after the contrast adjustments. You can see there's a huge difference here. And now this is a matter of personal taste, but you can also add a nice dreamy Orton effect. And Raya Pro users, you can go to Raya Pro, enhance and choose the top Orton effect. Choose the strength and just press OK. And when the Levels dialog appears, you can press OK there if you're happy with everything. And you can bring down the opacity until it looks more natural. So I've got it about 16% here, and that's the before and after. And it creates a nice, soft, dreamy effect. Now, the Orton effect is all about personal taste. Some people don't like it, some people do. I like it a bit more subtle, so I'd probably put it about 10%. And that just softens some of the details so they're not too strong, they're not too distracting. Now ordinarily I'd probably finish here, but there is another step we can make which a lot of photographers find very useful. And it's basically dodging and burning with color. And by doing this we can add a little bit of extra depth to the foreground and some extra warmth as well. Now let me show you how to do it. I'm gonna open up a new layer. I'm gonna set the blend mode of this layer to soft light 
I'm going to choose my paintbrush and select on the color of the foreground and choose one of the colors in the sky, a warm color, and press OK. Now I'm going to make the brush a lot smaller. I'm going to set the opacity to around 10% of that brush and I'm painting in some of the foreground. Now you can see along the edge of the hills here, they're a little bit brighter than below and the implication here is that some of the brightness from the sky is leaking through onto these areas and we can exaggerate that effect by painting in some extra warmth along here and if we want we can paint in some extra warmth here too. We can also brighten up the side of this hill here again suggesting that the sun is bathing the hill in light and we can bring down the opacity just a little bit and that's the before and after. We're just adding a tiny bit of depth to our image. Now personally I'm not a big fan of that in this particular scene so I'm going to bring down the opacity quite a lot but it's certainly a useful technique to have in future images when you think that your scene might be lacking some contrast or color then why not give this a try. So now I'm going to group all of these changes press command and G and show you the before and after. So this is the image we started with and after a few adjustments this is the final scene that we have. And because we worked with smart objects and adjustment layers this entire workflow is 100% non-destructive. And that's it. So I hope you found it useful as usual and I've got plenty of other Challenge Jimmy videos on YouTube so feel free to check them out in my playlist and check out my other photography videos too. And if you want to see more videos in the future, feel free to subscribe to my channel below. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.